In this problem, we're going to look at how to diagonalize a covariance matrix. We're going to work with the random vector x, and this random vector x has a covariance matrix k sub xx equal to this quantity right here, 2 square root 3, square root 3, 5. So the random vector x is just a length 2 vector, so its covariance matrix is a 2 by 2. And what we're going to do is we're going to find another matrix C such that when we create this new random vector y, y is equal to c times x, we end up with a random vector y whose covariance is the identity matrix. So the goal here is to kind of transform the random vector x into the random vector y via this multiplication by the matrix c, so that when we're all done with this transformation, the random vector y has the property that its covariance matrix is just an identity matrix. So that's what we're trying to do. So let's first work out what kyy is equal to. So by definition, that's the expected value of y times y complex conjugate transpose. If we're working with real valued um, random vectors, this is just transpose, but we'll just do this generally for now. We know that y is equal to c times x, so we can substitute in that definition. And then we can do a little bit of manipulation. cx is just cx, but the product cx complex conjugate transpose turns into x complex conjugate transpose times c complex conjugate transpose. The c matrices are just constants, so I can pull one out to the left and one out to the right. And then what we're left with is this expected value here, which is the definition of k sub xx, the covariance matrix of x. So this is what we end up with for kyy, and we want that to be equal to I when we're all said and done with the transformation. So this is really the identity we're going to work with to try to solve for what C can be. We're actually going to do this two different ways. In this first video we're going to do it kind of just the algebraic way, just trying to solve for what C should be. And then in the next video we'll actually solve for what C should be using eigenvalues and eigenvectors. But this first way that we're going to do it, we're just going to kind of do it algebraically, just manipulating this expression right here. So there are different things that we can choose for C. One thing we'll do to make our life a little easier is let's assume that the matrix C has complex conjugate symmetry. So that's one thing that we can do that will still give us a solution. We haven't limited ourselves. If we assume that C has this nice property, then this equation simplifies into this equation. So that's really the equation that we're working on. So let's think about this. If this is the equation that I have to work with up here. If I take that and I multiply both sides of that equation by C inverse from the right, then this C goes to an identity matrix and this identity matrix turns into inverse C. So all I've done is multiply the starting equation from the right by C inverse. And then what I can do is I can multiply this equation on the left by C inverse, that makes this turn into identity matrix, so I'm left with just K sub xx. I end up with another C inverse here, and then C inverse times C inverse is just C to the negative 2. So we've kind of come up with a nice relationship for how K needs to be related to C. If I flip that equation, if I inverse both sides of this equation, this turns into K inverse, and c to the negative 2 turns into c squared. And now I'm almost there. I have k inverse is equal to c squared. If I take the square root of both sides of this equation, the square root of the matrix, c squared turns into c, and then k inverse turns into k to the negative 1 half. So here is a nice compact expression for how I can compute c in terms of my original covariance matrix. So all I need to be able to do is compute the negative square root of the original matrix K. So how can I do that? Well, I can actually kind of do that in two steps. First, let's compute the inverse of this matrix. And then once we know the inverse, we can take the square root of it. And then we'll have K to the negative 1 half. So first of all, how do I take the inverse of a 2 by 2 matrix? Well, in general, for any 2 by 2 matrix, A, B, C, and D, its inverse is equal to 1 over a, D minus B, C times the matrix D, negative B, negative C, A. So if we apply that for what we're working with, remember we have that our covariance matrix K sub XX is equal to this, 
if we apply this identity to compute the inverse of that, what we end up with is that the inverse of the covariance matrix is 1 over 2 times 5 minus square root 3 times square root 3 times this matrix. And then if I simplify, that just turns into 1 over 7 times this, which is equal to 5 sevenths negative square root 3 over 7, negative square root 3 over 7, 2 sevenths. So that is the inverse of k, but from this identity right here, I don't want the inverse of k, I want the square root of it. So we also need to know how to compute the square root of this matrix. So how do I compute the square root of a 2 by 2 matrix? Well, in general, the square root of any 2 by 2 matrix A, B, C, and D is equal to this. So there's some new quantities here. There's this t quantity and this s quantity. t is equal to plus or minus the square root of tau plus 2s. Tau is equal to a plus d, so just the original matrix entries right here. s is equal to the square root plus or minus the square root of delta. And delta is equal to a times d minus b times c. So these are all quantities I can compute. I can compute tau. Tau is equal to a plus d. So for the matrix we're working with right here, we're trying to compute the square root of this matrix. A is equal to 5 sevenths, 5 sevenths, and D is equal to 2 sevenths. So tau is equal to 5 sevenths plus 2 sevenths, which is 1. Delta is equal to A times D minus B times C. So if I grab all the values A, D, B, and C from here and plug in, I'm, I end up with this, which simplifies to 1 seventh. I can now compute s. s is just equal to plus or minus the square root of a seventh. And t is equal to plus or minus the square root of tau plus 2 times s. So you'll notice here, um, there's actually different signs I can choose for these, and I've chosen the positive signs. So there's actually you know, different solutions for this that we can come up with, just like when you take the square root of a number, um, or take the square of a number, you, know, you have a negative solution and a positive solution. Same thing happens with matrices. So if I plug all this together, I can compute what the square root, so the, neg the, the negative one half of k is equal to. It's equal to 1 over t times a plus s. Then there's a b, c, and then d plus s. So this is what k to the negative one half is equal to, which is what we said c needs to be equal to to diagonalize the covariance matrix for y. So here is our final answer for the matrix C. And if you go check with your calculator, indeed C times KXX times C is equal to identity. And also notice that this C matrix has the complex conjugate symmetry that we had, that we said we wanted our solution to have. If I take the transpose complex conjugate of this quantity, it's equal to itself. So this is one way to go about diagonalizing a covariance matrix. And the way we did it was just kind of algebraic manipulations to come up with this nice equation here that we could then solve for using basic matrix inverses and basic matrix square root operations. In the next video, we'll do the same problem, but we'll use eigenvalues and eigenvectors.